Hello. Good, very warm. <laughs> and I've just been sat outside and I was like, why did I do this right before I'm coming on a live? I'm, oh, it's horrible. Anyway, hi everyone. Welcome to our live with Charlie. Super exciting. Oh, she's frozen. And the joys of technology everyone so just to sort of give you an overview of what we're going to talk about today with charlie it's going to be about her experience with amicus um very interesting experience from student rep to a volunteer and now she's a lecturer which is just so interesting the way that she's progressed um so I'm super excited for her to come back and we can find out all about her experience with Amicus. And if you have any questions, either use the question feature or write them in the chat. Um, and she can answer them. I think she should be joining back now. Yes. I was just thinking it's been going so well all day that there, there's there has been very little like hiccups <laughs> with everyone so of course when i join it's gonna uh it's gonna happen isn't it so um <laughs> yeah oh yeah also Hi. we can't forget your phd i was oh. just basically saying that you're you've got really interesting history with amicus and you've done a lot of stuff yeah it's been a while um that i've been around with the amicus family not as long as some of the people that you've heard with today but it's been a couple of years and um I think I've started to sit in as part of the furniture now, unfortunately, for Margot. <laughs> <laughs> so how did you first come about Amicus? How did you hear about them? Um, well, I think the way that I joined Amicus is probably different from what you've heard. Um, uh, over the last few uh, lives, definitely, people have been dedicated to saving the world and going out to do things for the future. I actually um, ended up um, I suppose the easiest way to describe what happened was that I was helping with a local election um, in the town that I work in. Because those of you that know Margot know that Margot uh, knows everyone. One of the guys that I was um, helping knew Margot and said, hey, um, I've got a friend, she runs a charity, she really needs some help, um, do you have any availability? Um, and that's how I met Margot. Margot lives quite close to me. I was uh, studying law at the time as an undergrad. Um, and I ended up coming to join Amicus and helping out, and I, I've not left. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. I think that's that seems to be a theme. A lot of people have said today they joined Amicus and then they just never left. They're still involved. Um, so, yeah. So, talk to me about you started off as a student rep, right? Yeah. So, when I first started, um, I was at Winchester University doing my undergrad. Um, we We didn't have any knowledge of, of amicus at the time um, i know that amicus has been established in some universities for many years uh, but over at winchester it was it was brand new and shiny so i am um, started as a student rep over at winchester and things kind of escalated from there really so since that time um i've done everything from casework to helping out uh, running training to any of the the, the stuff that comes across the desk with Margot and she's panicking a little bit that she hasn't got people to help out with. Um, it's been an absolute blast um, over the last few, few years. Um, not only have I got some fabulous experience working on, on real casework, real live things that are happening, um, cases, but I've also made so many friends and I think that's one of the themes that we've, we've definitely come across today. Um, it's, it's been really quite quite wonderful, to be honest. Um, plus, it's given me a skill base that I probably wouldn't have obtained from anywhere else that's helped me go on to, to do other things. Yeah, definitely. And like you said, it's been a big theme of people just spreading the love for Amicus today. <laughs> Everyone just loves it. Um, 
So after you were student rep, you went on to placement with Amicus, right? Um, so I haven't gone abroad. And I think um, that's something that's quite interesting and something that I think I'm really keen to stress today. Um, I've got a son, it's just me and him. So going abroad isn't something that really is easy for me to do. Um, I think, especially when you're a student, and especially if you've got caring responsibilities, the cost involved in going abroad and running a placement is so overwhelming. And I think the key message that I'm keen, like, keen saying keen all the time, that I'd like to put across is that, do you know what? You can still come and help Amicus, even if you don't want to go abroad. Um, yeah. Absolutely. So my placements have been involved in, in the London office, so I've helped out in the London office quite a lot. Um, I've been at the fake office in Margot's house helping over there, <laughs> um, but I haven't yet gone to America. Although Liz, um, I don't think we're hearing from her today, but Liz is very keen to get me over to Baltimore to uh, go and help yeah. over there. Very nice. So shall we talk a little bit about what people do in, like when they help out in the UK office? Because um we had a discussion earlier about it but we didn't really go into too much detail so i feel like we should sort of explain it now like what sort of stuff did you get involved with when you were uh, helping um i can see that several of my actual students have joined the chat so i'm, I'm gonna cater it towards a law student and to to help you understand what skills you can get if you are um gonna go and help him at the london office so basic level is that you're almost on par with a paralegal when you go and work in the London office, when you're helping with um, things like the casework, you're helping with um, delegation of casework as well, and keeping on top of things, checking deadlines, making sure that people uh, do what they're going to say they're going to do um, in terms of the case, the casework. Um, some of the cases that we have, I think we, you were talking about the Missouri project earlier, that's like a long ongoing project. But we've also had a number of things that I've been involved with in, in the London office that have been really time sensitive. So we've had to look at these cases, look at these people that are currently up against the court system, looking for help to, to help them whilst they're on death row. Um, and it's really making sure those deadlines are met, making sure we have the information that we need and making sure that the people that need our help the most really get it. Um, you could be a paralegal in a conveyancing firm here in London and be chasing up land registry and helping people buy houses, which is great, don't get me wrong. But for those of you that have more of a passion um, with you know, human rights and really helping people, this is the best way that you can do it, by doing an internship here in London. Um, as well as these time sensitive things, as well as these real cases that we have, we also um, are quite lucky when you come and do an internship in the London office because you don't really know what's going to happen. Jess, you've been there, you know what it's like. Oh, <laughs> I know. <laughs> it's can... so fun, though, because right. you can't pinpoint what you're going to do each week. It's just, it's such a varied experience, which, which is what I really love about it. Exactly. So from my point of view, I have done everything from going to some of the big law firms in London. We've been to Slaughter May to give a talk. We've been to a number of different ones with Margot and by myself to, to go and talk to their casework teams, to go and stand up and say, hey, this is Amicus. This is what we're about. Um, it's been really good. You completely build up on your presentation skills, addressing, you know, really important people and trying to get them to buy into Amicus. Um, not only that, um, you know, we've been helping with training, love training. Uh, you'll see me talking with Harrison later. Um, Harrison and I love a great training, training weekend. It's been a real shame during the pandemic that they've been virtual. Um, hopefully in the future, those of you that are watching might come to a real training and receive, meet everyone in, perfect, um, in person um, and see the things that we do there as well. Yeah, so I think it is... It's good to stress the point that it's just a very varied experience and you get so much out of it, don't you? Um, I mean, I know for me today, <laughs> something I never thought would happen. I was on the phone to a very high profile barrister explaining how Instagram works. Did I ever <laughs> think I was going to be there? No. Amazing. Was this Mark George earlier? Maybe. <laughs> we love Mark. And you know what, right? When you're a law student, especially when you're an undergrad, uh, the people that you get exposed to and the people that you have access to, they've given you, you know, they give you career advice. And, you know, my hat goes off to Mark because he's one of the, the, the nicest people that you will meet. And he will bend over backwards to help you with your career. He'll give you great advice uh, on what steps to do. Um, and, you know, where, where else do you get that exposure? 
Uh, where else do you get that? Um, Margot is shushing me not to out my doors, but I think he's wonderful, right? And I yeah. mean, you know, he he makes the time to help you as a student and to grow and develop. Um, and that's another one of the added bonuses um, of, of being with Amicus. Definitely. So you're a lecturer now. How did that all come about? What made you decide to be a lecturer? So um, I used to be a police officer, um, left that, went back into education. And my, my main, um, you know, aim was to go and practice, okay? Um, to go and um, um, be a barrister, save the world, as, as crazy as that sounds. I think we all have that idealistic uh, attitude, don't we? Um, along the way, um, I actually was talking to some of my lecturers when I did my master's over at Reading, um, and we were talking about some ideas for a PhD. Um, my PhD focuses on um, the effects of short-term prison sentences. I'm just over a year, well, just coming up to a year into that now. Um, and I, I won a scholarship for it. So I kind of derailed um, in my path. Um, you know, some of the, the inspiration for my PhD has come from the stuff that I've seen uh, with Amicus and the effects that, that um, you know, prisoners have whilst they're in, in prison and they're waiting on death row. Um, so I've ended up doing doing that and it's, it's been really great fun. I've really enjoyed it. So I'm currently just in the process of moving from ARUL in London, um, hi to my couple of students I can see on the feed, um, in the process of moving to the University of Chichester. So um, it's really quite exciting. And how do you think Amicus can help students? Like obviously you said about all the skills that you get, but do you think that there's anything else which students would find useful? Absolutely. Right. The reality is, OK, that the jobs market for law students at the moment is a scary place. Right. Um, you have to be more than just your grades on your paper. OK, you need to bring some more to the table. Every single job that I have been for, whether it be another placement or whether it be paid employment and you have amicus on your CV, people always want to talk about it. It's, it's always a question that's brought up. Have you ever met anyone from death row? Like, because people are interested in, in what's happening. And I know that I'm not the only person that's been here that will say the same. Um, and I think it, it makes you stand out. And that's what you need to do as a law student, isn't it? You need to stand out. You need to be able to show that you're going to bring something to the table in, in wherever you, you want to work. Um, I think it gives you a range of opportunities that you can evidence from. It can give you some situational experiences, time pressure, management, and it also is something that's a bit, a bit beyond the run of the norm um, that brings something different to your discussion, definitely. I completely agree. And it, for me, it's such a nice environment. It's not, I don't know, it's not as sort of... I guess it seems very serious because it's such serious work but when you're in the situation and you're in like talking to the team and everything it's a lot more relaxed than you would think um I think the, the big, way that everyone is it's very nice I think the biggest misconception is that it's a really big team right yeah 100% so, everyone assumes that you're going to come there and there's going to be a massive office and there's going to be loads of people. I mean, I think the reality is there's been times when, um, you know, unfortunately not so much recently, but there's time where there's Margot's like, Look, there's just me, can you help? Um, wow. Where we've had staffing changeovers and we've had new people come and go. Um, and, and there really is all hands on deck. So if you want to get involved, if you want to try something new and you want to make a difference, um, then that's why Amicus is for you, really. Yeah, I agree. I just, I can't recommend it enough. Um, it's such a great place to volunteer. And we were saying earlier, it's not a big commitment. Um, two days a week. So yeah. Chilled. And you can do more if you want to. Um, so, yeah, it's great. Yeah, there's loads of different ways that you can get involved, um, especially if you're a law student and you're watching this this today. Um, there's you can dedicate two two days a week and I know when you're in the middle of, of your deadlines and you're doing your studying two days a week it's like oh my goodness that's so much but there are other ways to help even simply just by becoming a member 
um, you can get some great access to information. So there might be a few of you that are coming up to doing your dissertations, need some uh, information. The Amicus newsletter that you get once you're a member has all these great articles that you can use um, to help expand your dissertation projects if you're going to write about the death penalty or even if you're studying a module such as law and society or, or international law, all of these will be really great things that you can have access to. Yeah, definitely. And if anyone watching has any questions, feel free to type them, um, like from a student point of view, because we can answer them. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think, you know, the more questions, the better if, if you're watching this live and you're considering what options that you have to, to do and how it might make uh, your experience at university better. I think it's also prudent to say as well that you don't just have to be an undergrad student. If you're a postgrad as well um, and you want to get involved now, because absolutely come along, right? You know, uh, there's no cut off, there's no age cut off. I was a mature student when, when I became a student rep. Um, so don't let age or experience be a barrier. Um, if you've got no office experience at all, actually, this is a great place to get some experience. I was useless with Excel until I met Margot, who schooled me very quickly on how to put numbers into, into spreadsheets. So, um, you know, you can pick up even basic office skills um, um, like that through Amicus, as well as, you know, the more, the bigger, bolder things. And even like social media, if you have social media skills, that's such a big asset to Amicus because so much stuff, especially at the moment, is all on social media. Um, and, you know, everyone's on there these days, so it's not like a majorly difficult thing. Um, so, no, yeah. Like... And we're definitely lacking in social media. Um, I remember trying to have the conversation about like, come on, we need and we need some Instagram. So we're moving away from Facebook, we're going on Instagram, and here we are on the Instagram, and that's through the power of student reps and you know bringing things to the table. But of course, everything's evolving, isn't there? And I'm sure that we can find someone that might want to you know launch our TikTok platform um, and give us a hand. Yes, right. I was saying this this morning. <laughs> I was like, right, where's our amicus TikTok? Exactly. <laughs> uh, the way that we use social media is definitely evolving. So um, I know that we've put some adverts out at the university that I work with to our events team to come and help with Amicus because, you know, you don't even really need to be a law student. Uh, my little sister helped a little bit um, with some of the, the social media that we did and she's a marketing student. So um, yeah. it really is, you know, open to everyone. Everyone can have a go and try something. Um, yeah and it's sort of an all hands on deck kind of thing you know everyone has skills that they can bring to it um even if you don't I'm not gonna lie when I was told that I was being recommended to Amicus for an internship I was like I don't think I can do that I don't think I have the skills um and then as soon as I got to Amicus I was like oh wow I'm like I have more skills than I thought I did absolutely it's a good place, I think, to sort of, like, develop and also realise that you do have potential and you, you can do things, basically. I think you probably didn't even realise, Jess, and the great thing about Amicus is that you don't have time to dwell on what you don't know because every, every moment matters, right? So, That's exactly know, it. There we go, you know, thrown in at deep end and, and you, you know, there's always someone to catch you so you'll never sweat your sink, but it's always a great way to develop, isn't it? Well, that's exactly it. And you just, you don't feel bad about asking for help. I know I see on LinkedIn and stuff, but quite often people are like worried to ask for help when they're in big law firms and things. And at Amicus, you don't feel bad if you ask. You just, you know that you're going to get a response and no one's going to be mad at you. They're just going to help. So it's really Absolutely. nice. Because it goes back to that whole Amicus family again. Everyone's really keen to build every, everyone up here and everyone's keen to see everyone develop. Um, no matter yeah. what stage you are in the process. Um, and it's always really exciting. I've been on a couple of um, interview panels for, for people it's some years ago now. And you see people go away on their placement and they come back and um, suddenly they're like, oh, yeah, you know, I got tenancy this week or I've just got my TC. And it, it's really quite great how you can go all the way through from student rep, go off and get your law career, but you'll still come back and help at, at you know, training yeah. weekends or support an event that we have when it's going live. So um, yeah, it's really great. I think that's exactly it. Everyone, once they start with Amicus, they just come back. Because yeah. it is, once you get into it, you see how amazing it actually is. Obviously, 
from the outside you're like oh yeah that looks really good sounds really interesting but once you're in it you're like whoa I like this <laughs> I think there's not many alternatives if you are a student looking for some experience at the moment that will give you the exposure that that Amicus does um I also think that at the moment, the way that the the pandemic has really impacted student experience and getting experience, um, the Amicus was already semi-adapted to working in this remote way. Um, you know, there's been lots of times when, you know, we've been at Margot, with Margot, and we've been talking to someone in America through, through FaceTime or on, on, on WhatsApp. So we were semi-accustomed to doing that before the pandemic hit. Um, so it's been good to still be able to have people helping virtually and having people that can still do great stuff and still get experience without having to worry about traveling into London or traveling abroad. Um, definitely one of the better organizations for that. A hundred percent. Yeah. I think if it was all in person, I know I probably wouldn't be in the same situation because I'm from Bristol. I go to uni in Birmingham. Um, and like, obviously London's just far away. So this has like really opened up a door for me to be able to do it virtually and you don't feel like you're really missing out because we've got the whatsapp group we mm. like we have staff meetings every week on zoom and it's it's really nice i think you've touched on a really good point there jess um i'm very keen for widening participation and people from non-traditional backgrounds to have the exposure to the, the this sort of experience and i always push my students you know that aren't from a typical law background to come Quite often when you're a student and you're trying to get experience in the legal world, cost is always a barrier, right? Um, season yeah. tickets into London are very expensive. We, we all know that. Um, you're going to have to find somewhere to stay. You know, it's all self-funding if your university doesn't have a grant system that can help you. So, you know, your point there, Jess, about you'll be able to pick up a laptop, join in, help out. Um, I think that's great because if you're someone that's watching this and is, I won't really would like to get some experience, but you're not from a traditional background. Jess has just proved that it really is for everyone. Well, yeah, and like my parents aren't anything to do with law or anything like that. My parents run their own business making signs for like companies. <laughs> um, so I don't know anyone really in the legal profession. Like my parents know a lot of people, but no lawyers or anything. Um, so you know this has given me such good opportunity to make connections and meet people and people i never thought i would speak to like i've seen on stuff at uni like on webinars and things i'm like oh wow they're really interesting and now i'm having conversations with them and it's it's just crazy but um if you think about your undergrad experience and the things that you've done there isn't anything that really compares to that level of support and help um and i think because Amicus is, um, is, 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 is so small, Margot just put a comment there saying, uh, we welcome people from all works of life. Absolutely proven by the fact that Jess and I are sat here talking to you today, okay? Yeah. <laughs> uh, no one from my background is from the legal world. Jess either, um, you know, I am an avid supporter of working class academics. Um, you know, we're, we're, not, we're not your normal law student. I'm not your normal law student. And we're not your, you know, my dad wasn't a judge, uh, which you yeah. are fine. Um, but yet we're still here, we're doing great work and it really is available to anyone. So um, yeah, just to reiterate the point, if you are from a non-traditional background, absolutely come along, don't be put off because you'll find like made of friends um, and, and we'll definitely show you the way. I learned so much in, in my first couple of years of Amicus from, you know, Mark, from other people that are, were, are there um, to help guide you, to give you that advice and some things that I never learned through university, you can learn sat around the table helping at Amicus. So don't be put off. We, we, it really is one of those places where you will be greatly received. Definitely. And would you like to sort of explain a little bit more about training and the sort of things that people might come across at training, like the sessions that they can Yeah, of course. So um, I'll do it from um, a student point of view, okay? Um, I'll tell you, if you are a student and you're looking to come to Amicus Training, why should you come, really? Um, you'll see when you sign up that obviously um, you can get, um, you know, we're asking for barristers, solicitors to come as well. But don't let them think that it's going to be above you. Absolutely not. If you come to training, you get to spend two weekends with us, um, you know, uh, 
well, hopefully it will be physically again soon, but for the moment it, it's virtually. Um, you will have exposure to some of the most interesting people um, that you, you will wish to hear talk. Um, every time we come to training, we have different speakers that will come. We have people from here in the UK and again across the pond in America who are out there every day working with people on death and death row, uh, making a difference. And that's everyone, the people that were in the court to help the, the mitigation team to even down to a uh, background research team as well. Um, I love that. I find it fascinating, mainly because Liz can, can talk to me for hours and I get excited about what she does. Um, but there's teams of people out in America who, when someone's on death row, they will go and research their whole history and bring it to the table for mitigation. You're going to learn all about that. But you're also going to learn skills as well um, in regards to uh, some practical skills. If you go on a placement out in America, what do you need to know? Um, how, how will you go there? What do you need to be equipped with? What things will you need when you go to the office? Um, so you'll be learning all about that as well. Um, you'll also have the experience to do your own mini investigation. We'll give you some stuff to, to look at and to work your way through it and see what you think if you were investigating a crime or you were representing someone um, that has the potential to have death, a death penalty at the end. We'll give you exposure to all of this. We also uh, enable you to network um, with people there. I think it's really, really, um, you know, important to any law student to network. You never know who you're going to be sat next to at Amicus training. You could be sat next to a QC, someone from, you know, Slaughter and May. You could be sat next to, you know, anyone. So go on, talk to everyone, get yourself involved. Um, you really, really um, will learn so much. Um, if you have an interest in um, anything from human rights to the rule of law, um, then Amicus Training is definitely the place for you. If you have gone to university to do a law degree or criminology degree, you don't really know what you're going to do at the end of it, then come to our training, um, hear all the different jobs that you can do um, from here in the UK to over in America um, and learn what there is out there. Um, I think training will give you something wonderful to put on your CV, but it'll also give you individually as a person something wonderful as well. Yeah, I think, <laughs> so we should mention that for students, um, it's like a reduced fee for training. And if you're a member as well, right? Um, yeah, and so some universities as well, it's worth mentioning, um, have an affiliation with Amicus. Um, so have a look, see if your university has an affiliation. If it doesn't, come and be a student rep and try and get them signed up. Um, and then you can get some, sometimes universities will sponsor your place to come. Um, I know that there's careers team have, um, at several of the universities I, I've been to, have a pocket of money. But if you want to go and get some experience, they might help you subsidise it as well. So don't let that cost be a barrier okay like there's ways around it apply to you know your law society if they have a training fund um at, at your university go to your careers team and seeing if they have a volunteering fund that can help you do it um and there's all different ways that you can you know get yourself here so cost shouldn't be a barrier to anyone and i know it's easy to say that when i'm sat here but there really are ways around it and i i know that um, universities are more than happy to support people that are bettering themselves and having these like, these experiences. Yeah, I know if any of my fellow BCU students are watching, obviously you all know that our uni is involved with Amicus quite a lot. A lot of our teachers speak at training, so yeah. Um, and there's plenty of other unis who are, who are involved as well. Um, anyone got any questions for us? It can be about anything amicus related. <laughs> We're not really fussed about the questions, anything. If any questions come through afterwards, I'm sure the team will tell us as well. We'll put them up on, on the story if, if you want to ask one through there. That's another yeah, way definitely. to do it as well. Um, so don't panic if you're watching this later on when they put it onto the Amicus live feed, be like, oh, I have a question. Bung it on um, and we, we can always come back to you and let you know. Yeah, that's a good point, actually. We should do that. We'll do some like Q&A stories, maybe. 
Yeah, definitely. They're a nice way for everyone who might be a bit worried about asking a question to, to get one out, out there and to get your answers. I think, though, the, the takeaway message as we approach the end of the session is, you know, give it a go. Um, if, you, if, you're in, if you're interested um, in, in helping, um, you have a passion for human rights. You, you, you're not, you know, you, I, I think, you know, any little interest that you have in advocates then come along and give it a go, whether it be starting a student group at your university to spread the word and help the cause, whether it be you come to a training event or, or whether it's just simply that you sign up and read our newsletter as a student. All of these things are a great, great way to get information to really, really make a difference. And I think you've seen how small the charity is and how many you know, people we don't have. So that student membership that you will sign up or your full-time membership if you're not a student watching this, um, every penny really goes to help making a difference and it really plows back into helping those on, on death row. So uh, from, from just you know, a few pounds a year to helping us um, or to something much larger, the choice is really you, yours, but give it a go, whatever one you choose. Yeah, I completely agree. So thanks everyone for watching. Um, stay tuned throughout the day for some more talks. And remember to keep on supporting Amicus and donate if you can. Exactly. And I will see you with Harrison at half past five. I just plug on half five. <laughs> yes, Charlie will be back at half five and I'm done for the day, so no one needs to see me anymore because I think I've made too many appearances. <laughs> I was lovely to actually meet you, Jess. I know. Um, I have a lovely time. Thanks for having me. Thank you for coming. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Bye.